Legendary, Spotlight, Phoenix. Okay, so uh, I was actually having a hard time deciding whether or not Phoenix or Ebony Maw was the next character uh, that I would recommend people unlock after Black Bolt. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, uh, as of right now, we don't know how the rest of the Black Order is going to be farmable. We know Thanos is hard, harder, uh, and we know Phoenix is actually easier to farm. And, more importantly, two of the characters uh, that you use to unlock Black Bolt, you can use to unlock Phoenix. So I'm making the executive decision to say that after you've unlocked Black Bolt, the character you should be working on is Phoenix for quite a few uh, reasons. Not the least of which, the point by the point you get Black Bolt, you've opened a handful of premium orbs and gamma orbs and alpha orbs and milestone orbs. So it's very likely that you have a pretty decent chunk of Mordo or Ronin or um, Villain of the Mist Controllers. Uh, who else is in that pool? My brain always fries. Nobu or Hand Assassin. You know, two of the characters you need for Black Bolt go to six star to unlock Phoenix like we lean into the value and as a result you'll end up with a six star black bolt so thumbs up you know what i'm saying so phoenix tied for black bolt in the this character is insane category she has some of the highest stats in the game well not phoenix dark phoenix but she has a very unique ability uh, to control the fight she can protect everybody until the time comes where she doesn't need to. She is... Uh, basically, she single-handedly ruined Arena for a year. From the year she came out until... Uh, like, Black Order. Actually, yeah. For, like, almost an entire year, she ruined the Arena Shard. Because the Arena Shard was just, like... Everybody who had Phoenix. And then most people who didn't. And then every time a Phoenix came around, more people had Phoenix. And the top ten was literally just like who had phoenix plus you know like who had phoenix plus a high red star on somebody else or a seven red star magneto or it it took away so much fun because it was all around one character it wasn't like which team comp which team set of five characters it was like what phoenix plus four nerds do you have to throw in she like difference between ultron because ultron was very beatable before uh, without having Ultron, here it was like, you did not not play Phoenix. You had to play Phoenix, kind of. And it was just like, you had to work on characters that were of questionable value outside. Doesn't matter. Phoenix, anyone with that much of an impact on the game is relevant. That said, again, she is the only legendary that unlocks at six stars right now. So, it not only costs more to get her you are not going to have her team you can't work on those guys to get that team to six and have a team to use her on so you can just get a good character and she is a good character she's not good in raids but we'll get into that in a second she is a really good character so let's now take a moment look at what it takes to unlock her and discuss why i think uh, she comes after Black Bull in the hierarchy of unlocks, okay? So, there are, right now, six villain mystic controllers. Gonna be seven soon. Maybe even eight. Don't worry about that. We'll talk about that some other time. So, Hela. We've already talked about how good Hela is. We talked about how important she is for unlocking Black Bull, and you get to use her to do that. Great. Mordo. Uh, really good on his team. He does have a team. The team's only getting better as time goes on, as more teams are being introduced to the game. Supernatural actually can beat those teams. Uh, they'd need a lot of investment, but they can do it. So, Supernatural, good. The investment in Mordo, not the worst. Loki, same thing as Hela, just a little bit worse. It's interesting, because the earlier you get Loki, the better he is for the team. And if you get Loki, Hela, and Captain Marvel early, that's your arena team. You know what I mean? Like, you're just doing that. Uh, Ronin, uh, almost no value, but he is a character that you can access early. I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. But he has some value. He's not a terrible character. Hand Assassin, in the exact opposite, is a terrible character. Uh, but you can access her incredibly early. She's available in two different 
uh, locations, if I remember. No, no, I'm sorry. She used to be. Uh, and then Mystique took over. That's why I'm showing my age right now. So Hand Assassin is node farmable, much like how Ravager, uh, Bruiser, and, and, you know, Boomer and Stitcher are farmable. You can farm them. They're not great, but if you can, if you're trying to get as many shards towards a character as you can, it, you know, any, any port in a storm, you know what I'm saying? And the last is Nobu, uh, the hero and the true legendary of the hand team. Uh, Nobu is available on a node as well as in the war store, and it sucks to have to spend either energy or credits farming him, but it's your choice between Nobu and Hand Assassin, and at least when the rework happens, Nobu might be good. Hand Assassin definitely won't. Uh, and if you're watching this post the rework, you can either be laughing at me at how wrong I am, or uh, nodding your head like, no, nah, he was right. We'll find out. I'm right. So, these are the characters that unlock Phoenix. Most importantly, they have to be seven, um, six star. She needs that. So, you can try to bring up, you know, Mordo, Ronin, Hand Assassin, and Nobu to six star. That's crazy. You could bring up Mordo to six star from the uh, arena store. That's totally reasonable. Uh, and since you're already working on Hela and Loki, that kind of kills two birds with one stone. So the real question is, which are the other two characters? This is going to come down to what you, what your resources are. Is it more reliable for you to farm a character in the raid store? Uh, are you at the point uh, in the game where you're just hot ripping raid orbs and praying? Because you may unluck yourself into Ronin. Uh, some of the gamma raids give you hand characters so you really just kind of got to find the one that's the most efficient for what you're trying to do uh and farm them that's it i my personal recommendation is hella mordo loki ronin and nobu because nobu does have two different ways to farm both node and war credits this way you have the option even though it's not a good option it's still the option to get towards the goal of phoenix uh, and at least Nobu is pretty reasonable character uh, post-rework, wink. The rest I'm not sure about. Ronin at least brings an entire team value. Like, the Kree minions are completely useless without Ronin. With Ronin, they're pretty reasonable, at least for Blitz and maybe war defense or cleanup in war if you need that. So, if you're working on the Kree team to because you're going to unlock Nick Fury... You might as well get Ronin as well, if that kind of makes sense. But Ronin's also just a good mystic character, too. Uh, any node that requires a mystic, you're not going to be too miserable about Ronin. He's got a summon. He's got an AoE damage ability block. He has buff clear on his basic that can't be dodged, like kind of like Venom. Um, a little bit worse than Venom, but, you know, pretty reasonable. Uh, so this is it. This is the team. This is what you need. Uh... At least these four characters are probably high up, and then your choice between Nobu and Hand Assassin, whatever makes the most sense. Again, if you start farming these characters early, what you're going to have is no access to Hela, uh, Mordo, and no team around him, uh, Loki, and maybe some value out of there, a Ronin with nothing to do, Hand Assassin, who is useless, and Nobu, who is secondary useless. So, you can't really start this game and be like, I'm getting Phoenix. How fast does it take you to get Phoenix? Like, $800. At any point in time, figure out it, the cost of what it takes to just buy the character offers. Not even the best, just the cheapest things you could buy and do it. It's like 800 bucks to get a Phoenix, like maybe not not even on her first pass, but maybe more on her first pass. But by the time, second pass, definitely. You know, but you're losing out on value because you're, you're farming for Phoenix, but you can't do anything in raids or war or anything else because you're getting these weird mishmash characters. So that's why she sits where she sits. She's after Black Bolt. Because Black Bolt requires characters that are in, you know, like Heimdall is in the war store with Mordo. So, like, it's easier to get a five-star Heimdall than a six-star Mordo. Um, Ronin raid store with uh, nobody, I guess. Sure, that's reasonable. <laughs> um, never mind. But, yeah, e energy farm, Nobu or Sif, which one is the higher priority on a war store? You know, like, it is what it is. Going back to Phoenix, we're going to talk about her usability. And determine uh, how great she is at everything. Okay, so. Arena, Nightmare. That's a new level. It's higher than God tier. She's Nightmare tier. She's amazing in Arena. Um, she's as amazing as anyone around uh, what's going on. So, her. Raids. She's very good at winning a raid node. She's not very good at winning the next one. Because she probably died. Even... 
with what's going on with Beast and like campaigns, that's two characters to get value out of one. That's not great. She loses value in anything called a persistent game mode, um, where you need to move on and she's dead because you have to res her. That said, she can do it. If you're willing to spend the heals or whatever to resurrect her, she'll get the job done. But at this point in the game, by the time you unlock her, you probably have a good enough pool of characters that you don't need to lean on her. She's really just like the final boss node of a raid, kind of, or like the final node you can do on a raid just to clear it so you can hit your 30, 60, 100%, whatever that is. Uh, War, her team is one of the best offense teams in the game. They do have some specific counters you use them for a lot, but they also have a pretty decent chunk of like, oh, there's just a really strong team. I'm going to X-Men it, you know? And that's an entire team comp. You can just use Phoenix as a flex character on a team to win a fight in war. Uh, I see a lot of people who've had X-Men on defense. Basically, when you have X-Men on defense, you're conceding the fact that this is going to take them two attacks. The first one is going to be kill Phoenix. The second one is going to be kill the idiots who are left over. Uh, and you can very easily just kill the Phoenix on turn one um, with, like, garbage characters. So, yes, it's going to get a war win, but probably only one. So, you don't really want to see her on, on defense really high on war. Talked about Arena, talked about Raid. The big thing for her is that they pretty much designed Dark Dimension 3 and maybe Dark Dimension 4 around the fact that she could just rip 20% of everyone's health. So we'll go into it a little bit more when we talk about Dark Phoenix. Uh, and again, when I go over the tier fours, you're going to see why I'm saying it. Uh, we talk about Dark Phoenix, like Vitality Drain is just a flat 20%. Same reason Minerva and Maw are good. Um, percentage damage doesn't care about numbers. And Dark Dimension 3 characters have health pools in the millions. So technically, this is the highest damage attack in the game in certain game modes. Eh, no, pretty much in most game modes, I think. Uh, but this is the highest damage potential attack in the game. And that's it for Dark Dimension 3. Yes. Sometimes you just bring her in, she dies, she does 20% to everybody, and then you heal her and do it again, you know? Like, it is what it is. Um, I think that made Dark Dimension 3 a little bit worse, but she's really good there. And then, you know, some splash value and stuff like PvP, she's like an auto ban kind of stuff. Uh, and that's her usability. Now let's talk about her abilities. First I'm going to go through Jean Grey and explain that none of these Tier 4s are for Dark Phoenix. Are for Phoenix. They're all for Dark Phoenix. So, Phoenix Rising, her passive, on death, summon Dark Phoenix. She, or Dark Phoenix, cannot be revived. On ally taunt, gain taunt. If Beast is an ally, two turns. She ain't gonna survive two turns. Gain 30% damage. X-Men gain 30% damage. Gain 30% max health. X-Men allies gain 30% max health. Now, this is something that's relevant. Uh, I know a lot of people have the wrong math on this. This is calculated at the beginning of the fight. So, at the beginning of the fight... All of the X-Men allies gain 30% damage. When she dies, all of the X-Men allies still have 30% damage. They don't lose it when she flips. That does not happen. Because it's a static effect. In fact, it happens at the beginning of the fight. Anything that changes a stat uh, on a character's kit changes it at the beginning. The only exceptions are buffs, but that's its own thing. And same thing with health. When she dies, you don't see their health pool go down. Like, the stats stay. And that was something a lot of people thought for a long time, and I just want to make sure everyone's clear on that. Um, but this is okay, right? Cool. Kind of cool. Phoenix Force. Attack primary target for a pretty decent chunk of damage. Clear all positive effects. Huge focus for this attack. It's very unlikely that she's not going to take all the effects off on this one, but sometimes it happens. Uh, bestow Light. Apply Stealth to all allies for two turns. Apply Defense up to all allies. Redistribute 25% of her max health. Regardless of what her health is, it's 25% of her max health, not remaining. So, if she's only at 10% health, she's dead. Uh, all heal allies receive an additional 10,000 health. This bypasses heal block. Transfer all negative effects from allies to self. If there are no allies, attack self for a trillion damage. Kill yourself. Uh, if Phoenix dies, 
her passive ability is triggered. Uh, this is incredibly funny. If she has death proof on when she does this, uh, she doesn't die, which is hilarious. Uh, I've done it one time just to test it. It was very funny. Um, and then the Phoenix dies, her passive ability is triggered. No big deal. That's just letting you know. They had to code it like that because uh, the game doesn't treat being killed and killing like an action that hurts yourself as something. So it's just kind of a reminder. And this is the only thing I have in tier four because I haven't needed to. Now let's talk about why this is relevant. Here's Dark Phoenix with her ridiculous power. From the ashes, on spawn, attack all enemies for 250% damage and apply defense down for two turns. That's 50% more damage and an extra turn of defense down. Huge boost. Phoenix Unleashed. Attack all enemies for 400% damage. Clear all positive effects on each target. Gain 40 quadrillion focus. This attack is unavoidable. Leads can't be dodged. Um, and I believe if she's blinded, it doesn't matter. But whatever. 20% uh, health. We talked about this a little bit a second ago. Apply regeneration to all allies. X-Men get an additional regen. The last level up is goes from 15 to 20. And like I said, for Dark Dimension, for most stuff in the game, that extra 5% really doesn't make too much of a difference. You know, it's just basically if they're red, it probably might kill them. They have to be like really low red. Uh, in Dark Dimension, that 5% is 5% of a million health. You know, it's huge how much damage it does. And it goes all to her. So she basically heals herself to full. In Dark Dimension 3, anyway. Uh, and we did that. And then the only reason I haven't upgraded her basic is because most of the time when I use Phoenix, if I'm using Dark Phoenix as basic, uh, the fight has gone ver on too long. Uh, and even then, I don't think that extra 50% damage that the final piece gives it is worth. So 200 to 250. If anything's left up, they're dead from this attack let alone the positive effects or anything, it should be okay. Uh, so that's where the tier fours lie on her. Now, ISO 8s, the truth is you don't need to put ISO 8s on Phoenix. Uh, it's currently not working the way it's supposed to. So the way ISO 8s are supposed to work is uh, they apply stat increases to the character, right? Now, obviously, whatever ability that Phoenix has from ISO 8s does not matter, but the stat increases do. So the fact that I have a, two, a rank 2 ISO 8 on my regular Phoenix should translate to my Dark Phoenix. Because regular Phoenix has 156k health and 18k damage. Dark Phoenix has 197k health and 21k damage. Now, she always has more damage than regular Phoenix... But those stats from both the ISOs and, you know, for Striker, you get 5% damage. Um, that's a stat that Phoenix gets. <laughs> like, she has that stat. So Dark Phoenix, her stats are based on regular Phoenixes. Now, supposedly in the code, it doesn't quite work that way. That is a bug that is not working as intended because the stats of a character are supposed to translate to their summons when that, like, Mr. Sinister or... or Doc Ock or whatever. Those are supposed to translate. Um, and they have not talked about it yet. So we'll wait to get an official uh, oops or whatever from Scopely on that one. But we'll see. Now, rating is the same as Black Bolt. Again, I'm not really going through the numbers on this one. She is probably the best or second best legendary in the game. Uh, from a perspective of what she can do and what you can do once you unlock her. That said, Black Bolt is way more useful in way more game modes. Um, and a lot of my opinion is kind of colored by the fact that I was playing this game when Phoenix came out. Uh, and I had Phoenix on her first pass and was like, wow, this is great. And then I noticed that everyone around me also had Phoenix in Arena. And Arena sucked. So Arena, Phoenix single-handedly ruined Arena for me. Uh, at least before when it was like... What team do I have, you know, to hold my defense? And even now with Black Order, it's like, well, what team is holding defense, you know, outside of Black Order? Well, good. Let the people who have the highest Black Order win hold Arena for a while, you know? Let the Arena meta be shifted by a good team. Um, don't let every single person have, like, Arena have Phoenix. Oh, you have Phoenix? Okay. Well, no one who has Phoenix is irrelevant. Now, I could beat the Black Order without having the Black Order, 
my defense just doesn't hold. And that becomes the issue. The issue needs to be that teams need to be good on arena defense or good on arena offense. They can't be good in both. And that's something that they haven't done yet. But that's a personal opinion, uh, and I don't want to digress on that. So comment below. Let me know how excited you are for Phoenix, how much money you spent uh, on her to get her early, uh, anything like that. I'm expecting to see a couple of people uh, who I've been talking with about Phoenix who watch these videos uh, get her on her next pass. So I'm looking forward to that for you guys. Anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.